Well, that doesn't necessarily mitigate the amount of people that were on cards in this film. And I don't, I understand that travel rights are part of your new other plan, but it's not going to make any difference because there are going to be a thousand more cars on the road. And I really encourage you to do a more substantial traffic pattern um, study. So that's what I'm most concerned about. Thank you, Ms. Kosh. Anybody else in the audience that wishes to speak at this time? Seeing none, there's a motion to close public participation by Deputy Sue West Charles, seconded by Councilman Ross, in favor, aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Abstaining? Carried uh, unanimously. We'll go on to the next item, which is the presentation uh, by Pam Review regarding an application for a special use permit. We have with us tonight representatives for our family. So, good evening, Mr. Haspel. Welcome to the town of Rhino Hill. Good evening, Mr. Seck, and all the other members of the board. I'm here today, uh, Joseph Haskell, is that okay? Yep. Uh, on, the, on the legal side, representing Jonathan View, and with me is Joe Nitro, who is the engineer. My job at this presentation is just to give you a conceptual background. Uh, and I'll turn it over to Mr. Nitro, uh, who will give you more of a description of the actual plans that are proposed. Uh, this should not be new to this board. Uh, I'm not sure how many members of this board were on the board two years ago, uh, but two years ago, uh, Fountain View bought this property from the town of Ramapo. Uh, and at the time that we purchased this property from the town of Ramapo, uh, part of the process was to inform this board as to the plans that as to how we were planning to use the property. Uh, since then, uh, we closed on the sale, we purchased it, and we started the development process, and we've gone through CDRC. And this particular development uh, is going to require, obviously, approval from the planning board. Uh, it's going to uh, require uh, certain variances from the zoning board, and it's also going to require the uh, uh, the granting of a special use permit, which is in the hands of this board. So we are coming to this board as our initial presentation uh, with respect to the special use permit of the uh, project. What is proposed again conceptually is Fountain View. Uh, I'm not sure you all know, but I'm assuming that you do, is an assisted living facility on College Road. Uh, and I assume also you have heard of the Northern Metropolitan Nursing Home on Maple Avenue. Uh, what is proposed here is that the Northern Metropolitan Nursing Home facility will be scrapped in favor of a new facility uh, on a single campus with uh, Fountain View. The property I didn't say in my initial opening, but the property that we purchased from um, the town uh, is contiguous to the Fountain View property. Uh, so what is envisioned is a single campus which would, uh, which would fulfill the needs of the the tenants, uh, the people who live at Fountain View, and when unfortunately they may get older and a little bit less able to uh, be able to uh, perform their lives uh, without more nursing care, they would, for lack of better words, graduate to the nursing home facility, which would be still part of the same campus, effectively go from one building to another. Uh, what's, if, again, if you don't know where this property is, this uh, uh, Fountain View is on College Road, and behind Fountain View, which is essentially between Fountain View and the New York State Thruway, was this vacant parcel. Uh, again, uh, as it's proposed, uh, there is no um, change, we believe, to the track patterns because the new facility will be using the ingress and egress and all the other um, uh, 
Lurkin City, yes, so I think you guys call it, um, uh, access that of the Fountain View, um, uh, of the Fountain View facility. Uh, I, it will not require, I don't believe that there's any other access to the, uh, to the, uh, nursing home facility. It's basically going to be going through the, um, the Fountain View facility. Uh, the reason that we're going to require variances is only because of the setbacks between the properties of Fountain View and uh, and what will be the new nursing home facility. Uh, since we envision it as a single campus, we don't really envision it as, as two separate lots and because at that point in time there's different setback requirements because those lots will still be Lack lots of a matter of record. That's the principal reason we're going for the uh, variances. <clears throat> we don't see any real impact on any um, of the surrounding uh, landowners because this facility is going to be on the side where the New York State Thruway is, and on the side where there are some single residences, there's really going to be no development whatsoever. Again, if you don't know this particular uh, land, there is at this point in time, a cell tower in the center. The land that we purchase is what I call the bagel around the bagel hole, um, with the hole being the cell tower and the uh, the bagel being the property that we acquired from the town. All in all, we don't see any significance or even any uh, uh, detriment to, uh, again, the road system, the neighbors, or anybody else. And uh, I believe that is, uh, unless the board has some conceptual questions, I'll turn this over to the engineer. Do, do, do any board members have any questions at this point, Mr. Haspel? Thank you. Thank you. around the back here. So this will be our second means of access for uh, 
fire truck services only, not for any other um, vehicles. I just have a uh, question. I think your narrative said there's going to be a, it's going to be a 120 bed facility. How many uh, staff members do you anticipate that will be above what's already existing at the assisted living park? Uh, if you know, I don't know. I can get that information for you. But as I said, it's, it's basically what's happening at, at North Norman, what I, Northern Metropolitan. Uh, it's just going to be brought over. So those are fixed numbers that are easily to, tra to transfer and to let you know, and we can let you know before the public hearing. Great. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions at this time? Very good. Uh, why don't we then, oh, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, why don't we go a little bit out of order and go to 2B, which is to uh, discuss the resolution to set a public hearing on this matter, uh, an application for a special use permit. We have a proposed resolution to hold the public hearing on um, September 13th at 7 p.m. We have a motion to that effect. Yeah. Motion by Deputy Supervisor Trudeau, second to Councilman Rossman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? By unanimous vote. We are scheduled a public hearing for September 13th at 7 p.m. on the special use application. Thank you very much. We'll see you in September. Thank you. Thank you. There's a song like that. Yeah. <laughs> see you in September. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. We'll go now back to item uh, 2A, which is another proposed public hearing. And this is for the Community Development Block Grants Program. And every year we apply for community CDBG Community Development Block Grants through the County of Rockland, which administers it. And we um, have a public hearing to discuss the town's needs and the proposed applications. So at this point, we have a proposed resolution to hold that hearing on November 22nd at 7 p.m. Motion by Deputy Supervisor Charles, second Councilman Rossman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? Motion carries. We'll have a public hearing November 22nd, 7 p.m. We'll go now to item three, which is to accept the minutes of regular meeting. The regular meeting is held August 9, 2023. Motion to approve the minutes. Deputy Supervisor Charles, second and Councilman Rossman. Thank you. That was last one. That was two weeks ago. Three. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Carried. Item point zero will be an abstention. We'll go to item four, town attorney's agenda. Item A. We'll do A and B. We'll discuss together. That's the Miller's Pond Planning and Development application. There's a resolution to amend the secret findings and to refer the matter to the Rampo Planning Board, the Rockland Planning Planning Department, and the schedule of public hearing. Uh, we have our land use attorney, Ben Gailey, available by Zoom. Could we confirm Mr. Gailey is uh, able to hear us and we can hear him on Zoom? Ben, I think you're muted. Well, well I, I plan to have the applicant do a presentation, their presentation, and then Mr. Gailey can then uh, advise the board after they're done. So I'd like him to be able to at least hear us and we can hear him. If there's a problem with uh, the technology, maybe we can do a phone call. Yeah, put him on speaker. That's right. Hopefully, we we'll get yeah. sooner rather than later. Uh, I'm get off Zoom because we can't hear you. I'll put you on speaker here. Uh, should we call from this one? Yeah, yeah. speaker phone. Yeah. 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 Uh, 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. They will in a second. Go ahead. What if we call for me? Oh, that's much better. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gailey. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to uh, we have representatives of Mayor's Pond present. I'm going to ask if they would like to uh, do a presentation with us with Mr. Rizzo. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Uh, Daniel Rizzo with White Knox and Canada representing Mount High DLC. Linda from the Mount LP, the petitioners for Miller Pond PUG zoning amendment submitted in January, and which we recently summarized for you in, in June. Um, the Mount Ida leadership is here, so along with Kimmy Warney, an engineering firm, we decided to put this all together. So tonight you have two resolutions before you to allow the PUD planning process to move forward to its next stage of, of public hearing and receiving of public comments recommendations from your town planning board and the Rockland County Planning Department. Um, since January, uh, in the submission of our application, we've appeared before the CERC, CRDC uh, three times, uh, and at their direction have developed a comprehensive environmental assessment report um, with 12 appendices, totaling 1,700 pages, um, addressing all of the potential site-specific impacts of the Miller's Pond project. This analysis builds on the extensive analysis you, you prepared um, for the Northeast Yamapo Development Plan, GIS, in 2019-22, where uh, the Miller's Pond project uh, was identified as Opportunity uh, Area D. Um, in that document was uh, a, a plan, a, a great deal of site-specific information regarding logical and ecological uh, uh, factors uh, that the additional information is now bringing up to date with, with additional interaction with agencies as well as questions asked by CDLC um, and uh, your consultants, uh, MJ Engineering and, and the legal consultants of Ben Daly. Um, all of the information that we've developed has been shared, your, your board has shared that with the other involved and interested agencies. It's also been now posted on its own Miller's Pond secret document webpage, which makes access a lot easier, but it also keeps the opportunity uh, to, to keep the public current with things as they are going. Uh, we've consulted over these same months, we've consulted with numerous other agencies, including DC, NLSDC, EOT, Rockland County Sewer District, Veolia, ONR, uh, and provided them with information and gave them additional information, got information back about each one of their subject areas uh, that have been integrated into the environmental package that is now, uh, in effect, supplements your environmental record for making decisions. We're going to continue to do that because in any regulatory process, you, as you get more information and you need agency approvals, you're going to coordinate with them. But we, you know, we've committed to make sure the town is part of that understanding. And so letters from the various agencies, for example, DEC has determined we don't need a weapon department. Uh, DEC has determined we don't need an endangered species paper. Why? Because we're following all the protocols that identify and avoiding touching upon those resources. So that, that's our that's our goal here is to make sure for presenting something to you as a board that you we've avoided the potential impacts that could cause a potential problem. Um, the first resolution you have tonight is as the secret lead agency, uh, and that's the adoption of a proposed amended and supplemental secret finding statement regarding the UD application. It's it's only a determination that no supplemental EIS is warranted and that through conditions of mitigation that you will eventually impose on the PUD and the planning board will also take into account if you, if you adopt the preliminary PUD as the plan, and that's a decision yet to be made several months down the road. Uh, if that happens and when we apply to the planning board for the final PUD plan approval for each phase, they will attach the, the same conditions and additional conditions based on both their own review and public comments. So, but in order to get to the next stage, the public hearing stage and the referral stage, uh, your code, your 
376-24, the flexible overlay in, in your zoning, the PUG zoning, um, requires that you make a determination that no supplemental EIS is, is indeed um, the, the opportunity for public comment remains, and it's very important. And, and we intend to listen very carefully if the board adopts the resolution tonight and schedules a public hearing and sends the comment, the, the plan, this our, our plan, not your plan yet, our plan. Uh, to the planning board, the, plan, the county planning board, that we will we will address every one of the comments that we get back, and you will ultimately make a decision way down the road with respect to the PUD, the conditions, the form, etc. Um, to, tonight, just a, a late this afternoon, I know you received a letter uh, from uh, on behalf of Rosa for Rockland, uh, from the law firm Gordon and Spencing. We've reviewed the comments that they made. Um, they, they believe, and I could be correctly, that simply because you did a GPIS and you didn't have at the time the GS, all of the site specific information, but, but per force of that, you need to do a supplemental EIS. I respectfully disagree. What we've done is address in the EAF, and this is a normal process, this is how you get to an EIS and get the, the environmental assessment form helps inform the lead agency about what impacts are likely and how they might be avoided. We have taken the, the position of designing our project with the input on the technical side from both your consultants and our consultants to avoid the potential for significant adverse impacts. And the draft findings say the draft in front of you documents that process, um, summarizes those issues, identifies the things that will need to be conditions and the commitments we made in our document, our final document. And that's, uh, and you're, you're, I'll leave to uh, Mr. Galey to address uh, that, that process a little bit more. So, um, as far as the um, amended finding statement, um, in order to move to the next stage, you have to complete the secret process in the way it's, uh, it's developed in your PUD zoning, and we ask you to consider that finding statement and adopt that tonight. Um, it does not mean, however, the, in the responding part to the extensive list, uh, that the public op opportunity for public comment is eliminated. It, it's not, that's not the case. The, the, there is no limit on what the public comment it can be on the PUD and the documentation and the application support. And we welcome that. And we, 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 we've started our own dialogue with Rosa for Rockland, and we'll continue that dialogue. We respect it. They've raised issues in the past. We've addressed them, whether they understand that we've addressed them yet, because it requires you actually sitting down and reading the documentation that's on the town's website. Um, and I'm not, it's not, I'm not convinced that council has had that opportunity. Um, but it's in there. So each one of the sub areas here is in our EAF and it's addressed in the findings. If they think it needs to be addressed better, uh, or they have a different view and there's a substantive debate, share that with us all and, and we, we will consider it further. Um, the second resolution relates to commencing a formal public comment period on this application. Um, and that's the, the referral of the local law uh, that we developed. But it reflects now the input of, of CDRC. Um, because we made a lot of changes to it for, since the January version because they wanted more detail. So there's a lot of detail on the bulk area, etc. If those of Rockland or other members of the public or this board or your planning board says, gee, we'd like to see a little bit more detail or gee, why do you need this or that, we'll hear from them and, and that's uh, this next stage and we will respond. Um, you, it doesn't, accepting the, these findings tonight and moving ahead, does not foreclose the town board from doing anything. The town board it, it has absolute discretion to say, you know what, we don't want to see anything happen here now. Extreme, sorry, right? but 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 that's that's the breadth of your discretion. So I, I just want you to make sure you understand that because I'm not asking you to do something that's, that's final and, and committed to a particular requirement. It's just not the case. Um, and then. Uh, the, uh, this resolution that you have before you um, provides for scheduled referral to the county planning board and to the, the town board and scheduling a public hearing on September 13th with an extended public comment period through the 22nd. Uh, and we intend to listen very carefully to all those comments, review them, prepare a summary of them, just like you would do in the EIS process, because we think it's the best way to inform uh, the board of the decision uh, and, and how it's making its decision. Um, so, uh, 
Again, no formal, no formal action by the town board can be taken on the PUD until we go through this process. Uh, and we welcome it and, and look forward to uh, any questions you have. Thank you very much, Mr. Rizzo. Do any board members have any questions at this time for, for council? Mr. Duke. Yeah, I'm going to ask him when we're ready to walk us through the process, discuss the resolutions, and give us his advice. Uh, Mr. Rizzo, do you, does your client have any further uh, uh, people that they wish to present? No, no, not unless you have a question. Very good. Thank you very much for your presentation. At this time, then, I'll turn to Mr. Gailey, who's our land use attorney. Um, I assume you're able to hear what Mr. Russo said. Yes. Yes, please. Referred to our planning board for their input. It goes to the county planning department, which will issue a general, general municipal law review, which could either um, uh, be adverse to it, it could, uh, it could remain it for local consideration, uh, which affects the, whether the needs of the override or not, uh, generally. And we would schedule a public hearing. There's a proposed public hearing date of September 13th with a nine day window afterwards for written comments to be received, as we've usually done on similar applications. And then at the public hearing, we'll hear from the public. Um, and that will, the, at that hearing, we'll be discussing the actual PUD application, the actual. So uh, we're expecting that those two, uh, the county and our planning board, will be done within the next few years. September 13th, less than a month. It's three weeks from now. So obviously, if they're done, that will be good timing. If they're not done, we'll have to uh, deal with it. And if the schedule has to be adjusted, we'll, we'll adjust it. Is that not what the county is responsible? It could be, they have up to 30 days. Sometimes they've come in under that. It, you know, uh, we deal with PUD before certified. We deal with PUD first. Ms. Kelly, if I'm misstating, please jump in and correct me, but we deal. The town board is the gatekeeper on the PUD. We approve the PUD, we approve the concept. We have site plan. If we don't approve the PUD, there's no site plan. It doesn't go to the planning board. If we approve it, it goes to the planning board for site plan. So it's going to us, then back to them. It goes to us first, and then the, plan. the planning board is only getting it now just to review and advise. As if, like when we do its own change, the planning board advises, but it's not for an approval. Uh, it would only go to the planning board for site plan approval if and when we've approved the PUD. Did I summarize that? Okay, thank you. That is correct. Very good. Okay, and I believe there's nothing stopping us from starting the hearing on the 13th, even if we don't have the recommendations back from the county or the planning board, it just might affect when we could then uh, vote on the resolution. But we could certainly start the hearing. Are we to the county? Yes, we are. Okay, thank you. 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 Thank you.
I'm sorry. Right. Good pro, good pro opening. Right. Good pro, pro closing. We can always just adjourn it. We've done that in the past and we want to keep the public area open as long as needed. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, okay, ben, you can address this as well. It, it's your prerogative on how long you want to leave the hearing open before you trigger a need to make a decision. It, you have to do an unlimited flexibility. Mm -hmm. so it's in our discretion. It, yes, it's, it's a legislative act, so mm -hmm. you have. You, were, you remain in control until you finally make a decision, and even then you're still in control because of conditions associated yeah. with your decision. That was one of the, the advantages of the yeah, that, was, that was one of the advantages of the of the Bullpup law that it, it gives the gives the board this uh, control both in terms of uh, the discretion to approve and the discretion to impose conditions. All right, no one has any further uh, questions about it. Ask, do we have a resolution to adopt the amended uh, super findings? Motion by Deputy Supervisor Charles, seconded by Councilman Weissmendel. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, abstaining. Carries 5 0. Do we need a roll call? Do we? Yes. I apologize then. We'll, well, I'll ask the clerk to conduct the roll call. Councilman Weissmendel? Yes. Councilman Weissmendel? Yes. Councilman Rosman? Yes. Deputy Supervisor Charles? Yes. Yes. So now the motion carries 5 0. We'll go to item 4B which is the resolution to refer this to the Ramapo Planning Board, the Rockland County Planning Department, and to schedule a public hearing for September 13th at 7 p.m. with a comment period for written comments to be received through uh, close of business September 22nd. Well, we need a motion first. A motion with Deputy Supervisor Charles, second and Councilman Rossman. I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Why not? Yeah. Okay. 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 Yes. 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 You second that, Mr. Rossman, why don't we amend the resolution? Motion to amend. 701. Okay, it's good. Very good. Do we need to revote it? Yes. Motion okay. to amend. And second, if I have some of those Yeah. Might as well. So let's do it again. Just so there's parity. Correct. Parity. Yes. Motion to amend. Yes. And you see Councilman Rossman second with the motion. Same. It's the same thing. I know. Councilman Weisman, though? Yes. Councilman Rossman? Yes. 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 So we will we'll try to do that whenever possible. Sometimes it's not always uh, easy, but we will try to have them here in person. I, I prefer that too. It's a lot easier to avoid black people, but we do the best we can. It's so pre cool. And a new system is the supervisor yes. that works well and we'll ensure that it looks as if you were here other than it won't be a hologram. That's right. That'll be next. That'll be our next one. Yeah. I think the public hearing would be helpful to have both oh, council and our engineers here live. We'll, we'll make that request to them immediately. Very good. We'll move on to item 4C. Um, so, this actually is going to be a slight adjustment to the resolution. This is an acceptance of an easement at 607 Route 306. As part of their site plan approval, uh, the town planning board required that they give the town a stormwater maintenance and access easement. The resolution says it's a stormwater maintenance and access agreement that should just be amended to say easement. And it's in the top right hand corner. It's not highlighted. It's, well, it's a slightly different color, but it's a, a great scale. This area here. Thank you. Motion, Council, uh, Deputy Supervisor Charles, Councilman Weston, will be seconded. All in favor, aye. All opposed, abstaining, carried by the zero. Uh, item 
Why not one forty? This one also needs a slide of that and should just say acceptance of easement. There is no dedication. So as part of the approvals of two one one by the road, then we're required that um, the uh, congregation provide uh, stormwater access to the easement to the town as well. There is yes. no this is so Oh, that's just the right. So we have the agenda. The resolution only says uh, acceptance. Acceptance of easement. So this is just for the stormwater maintenance and access easement. That's all. So it's my question is, this one other pieces? I'm not sure if it's been dedicated or not, but they're not asking for that um, right now. The only thing that they're asking for, and I actually just confirmed with the while we're here. So that's just the Motion to cast the voice bill, second and deputy supervisor Charles, all in favor aye. aye. Opposed, abstaining, carried by the zero. Got an item E, acceptance of the dedication and of this, this is actually a dedication. Yeah. So this is city to have um, but the strip of land to be uh, dedicated to the town and again it was part of our plan board. Very good. Motion deputy supervisor Charles, second councilman Rossman, all in favor aye. aye. Opposed, abstaining, carried by the zero, got an item F. The next is the settlement of the town. You said it's a fee? It's an eight one, yeah. The it's project site plan it's site plan approval for our congregation to Um the next is the settlement of the tax structure RA is congregation Beth David. Uh, we'll be giving them hundred percent exemption for the twenty three uh twenty four tax year. Um this was just an error when we did the review of the Seconded Deputy Supervisor Charles, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, abstaining, carried by the zero. We're going to item G. This is the settlement of the tax cert congregations in front of Elkanon. This is at 20 West Side Avenue. Um, they were denied their exemption back in uh, 2019, 2020, and for the 20 and 21 tax years based on um, violations on the property. We now know that that is not what the actual law states. It should have been denied for that. The use of the property is. Um, so your office your office is recommending the approval. Cool. Yes. How much money are you? Yes, we are. So it's within um, the, the time frame that we're allowed to write for it. Okay. It's 2019-2020 and then the 2020-2021. Okay. How much money are you talking um, the assessment on the property, I'm not exactly sure how, what the dollar amount is, but the assessment on the I property. I see the assessment. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what the actual okay. return amount is. Yeah. Motion by Deputy Supervisor Second. All second Councilman Rossman, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? Carried by the zero? And, and just to add on to that, they've been exempt every year since. Oh, then. oh so, yeah. yeah. Right. So, so it's not as though they haven't been. It was those two years that they were we not. were reviewing them. We were looking at the building department file saying, oh, you've got a violation. We're denying you. Sorry. That's not the law. So we're trying to correct it. There's been a few bills previously that we've gone back and corrected. Thank you. Great. Um, the next is the name of the street. Um, this would be uh, for the housing project field extension. They would name the public road that's serving that housing project. Is it a request that it's public? Is it? It is. It was dedicated. Yes. Oh. Well, only thing I would say is I think there's a typo because it says laser terrorist, but the resolution is laser court. I think laser court is the intention. Right. Uh, I, I don't know the details, I know it's part of the approval. You know what? Yeah, they can get their 911 ah. numbers. They must have an issue street and the town must name it regardless of the name is street that get yeah, that's street for correct for flood. Yes, like that's the what one was there that's that's what only public I don't know when. I don't know if you previously so, 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 one of the standards for I, I, they're just saying the road. Why don't we do that? And that way, this will be construed as a dedication, and right. it will simply be a private public 
So I don't just make the road so sort of terrace. It's terrace. Court. 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 I want to do a court is an action. Mm -hmm. oh. And it might be noted that the yeah. person that passed away that owned this property, his name was Laser. That's why. So we are getting, getting to name it in I have, nice I have, memory. Absolutely. We have a motion by second. Councilman Rossman, uh, Councilman Weissman, a second by Councilman Rossman. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? Carried unanimously. It's the airport be known as Laser Court. And we will go on now. Thank you, Ms. Slater. We'll go to purchasing. We'll do um, item A. Ms. Montel, approval of the change order. Yes, we have, um, we have had an outstanding job done by ATEC. Um, this is uh, in comparison to what we've had in the past. Change orders, this is relatively small. The project went exceptionally well. Everybody is complimenting the town on what they've done. Ed Moran, our town engineer, is in the seat of the change orders and wholeheartedly agrees with the necessary miscellaneous work and the overcharges. So we're asking you to approve this. This is going to become a source of funds out of the highway as well as the capital bond. Let me also just take the mention to, to praise both ATEC for the speedy and, and fantastic work they did, as well as our engineers uh, at Moran, Mike Stas, and Paul Gnansky for really being on top of this project and shepherding it to a very good, uh, good result. And you, Mr. Supervisor, for meeting with these uh, yes, people from the, the area multiple times, and you as well. hearing, hearing what their concerns were, working with them. We multiple times were out with our engineers mm -hmm. actually looking at these and all projects that we moved forward with. And I think the, the results of being hands-on really show that we got a very good uh, project out of it. Thank you. Mr. Supervisor, I'm looking at these items, just three mm -hmm. lines, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. I was trying to understand how to get this on the side, so it's missing almost a thousand square feet. And Mr. Gordon's memo, I mean, the answer just does not seem to come up properly designed size of the project. Well, Mr. Lee's walls. Yeah, Mr. Moran reviewed it. A small percent of additional wall, not this. Uh, I think it was uh, conditions on the street that required additional walls to be built. Uh, so there was a wall. I don't know specifically what there were, was there were retained walls, walls and there were more. Yeah, there were more than a district, certainly. And other such things. Yeah. So who made the mistake? No, it wasn't a mistake. It's was just that conditions as they as they did the work required it. And that's standard on I mean, any public works project. There's always change orders. There's always things that are not. As anticipated, this is pretty large. It, Actually, it's not large. Yeah. And if you read the memo from Mr. from um, from Mr. Moran, correct, mm -hmm. you'll fully understand that uh, this is well within the limits of what would, would have been anticipated. He writes the work was daily inspected by him, who was engineer second for the town rampo, and he recommended acceptance of the change orders as the above list of work was necessary. No, Complete the project, provide a safer roadway system. This memo ignores the thousand things. So just count it. It's just it's not just a fact. Doesn't see the memo that just would have said, well, we counted two thousand square feet, and actually it was twenty eight hundred. That's fine. But I don't see any way we refers to the fact that the retaining walls and improvements such. Would be possible to request submission to it just before we ask the board? Well, if that's what the board wishes to do, we could. Uh, at this point, we have we have a proposed resolution. I think uh, if anybody wishes to make a motion. Before we do that, though, do we have access to the capital money? The, the bonding money? We have an additional capital money that we have. This capital bonding is which one? Is that the 18 million? This was this the 18 million or was this an earlier bond? It's an earlier bond. Oh, okay. oh, Mr. Lynch is the other one. Exactly. Bonding from the earlier bond. That's what I thought. And that money is available and accessible to the candidate. Yes, it is. It's a source of so we bonded extra? We have bonds. This town has had bonds for quite bonds. some bonds sometime. But the bonds are usually put towards towards projects that we know are Actually, from. that's not the case. When this town bonded for many, many years, it was done in a very um, uh, uh, broad spectrum, giving the town and highway 
the department and DPW the ability to effectuate projects because they know that there's going to be additional um, costs associated with it. Just one, do we have a resolution? I just want to say a something. Motion. So we make a, well, I'm sure. sure we make a motion. I think that one of the things that we should have done is we had moment right after I've gone before. Um, I don't think we anticipated the growth we have as quickly as we had. And now that we have it, one of the things we have to do safety-wise is to ensure that we have enough sidewalks for folks to walk. Because quite frankly, we need to be concerned about the safety of our walking. Thank you. I, I'd like to point out that it clearly says during the construction, additional retaining walls were necessary due to the realignment of the sidewalk location. Be that on the street with the residents who needed the sidewalk moved so that it would work, so that we could effectively and, allow for the sidewalk. And as the memo says, our engineer, Ed Moran, reviewed it. He feels the charges are appropriate. If he thought they were not proper charges, he would certainly have told us. I have faith and confidence in his, his ability to make that decision, and I would rely upon his recommendation for us. So we have a motion to approve by Deputy Supervisor. We have a second by Councilman Ross. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And yes. abstaining. So carries. Three, three to two, carries. Now we'll go on to item B, which is the acceptance of the bid for Sweet Street Food Services. I'll ask Ms. Mott how to uh, certainly address Mr. Romanowski's question. This is for an um, as needed basis. Multiple times as we've had major growth in this town, our Sweet Street Food capabilities don't meet what we need on our streets. We have one sweeper, it's been down multiple times. We cannot clean the town as effectively and efficiently as we would like to. Our highway superintendent requested that we do this. Therefore, I am recommending that we go ahead and do and, it. And just to be clear, as you said, this is to supplement what our highway Correct. department does, not to replace it. Correct. Okay. Do, um, do we have a cap on how much we're going to be spending on this? The highway superintendent is issued a budget that this town board votes on. After that, the town board really has nothing to do with the highway's budget. That's correct, Mr. Stays, Lynch. That is correct. So as long as he stays within his budget, it's in his discretion. Correct. And that's for street sweeping for that? Street cleaning, yeah. So that's the so far. Um, have we gotten any other bids from anybody else for this project? Read the bid yeah, documents. The bid documents are in the and there was one bidder. It's not justified. Have we met this individual? Do we know that we know this uh, street sweeping content? I'll ask Ms. Montella, uh, the question from the council. Certainly, council. the highway superintendent is issued a budget that this town board votes on. After that, the town board has nothing to do with the highway's budget. Thank you. 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 Thank when I deal with the post previous to this project, they based on the post of the Colorado construction. They have multiple locations up here where they do the sweeping. Mr. Bryn met with them. He's not going to use them all the time. He's going to use them when he needs it. If we have a high area, for example, the funeral this past week, we needed to send out multiple street cleaners and sweepers. We didn't have it. So they worked until 4 o'clock in the morning. When we have events in this town, public or private, the streets get dirty and we need to clean them. Our highway superintendent is requesting that this board accept the bid of this individual. So the board can choose to do so or not do so. I'm going to make the motion to accept it. Oh, you did. Yes. I'm sorry. There's a motion with the empty Charles Charles also. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Both. Abstaining. Good. So carries three to one with one, uh, with one abstention. Two, two, the two, two opposed. Oh, you oppose. Oh, I thought you Three to two. Still carries. Very good. We'll move on now to personnel. Uh, we have a resignation by Tamara Epstein from the position yes. Courier. Unfortunately, she's moving and she's leaving us. She was a very good employee. Um, I'm not sir. sure whether we need to discuss it any further. No, we will. We will uh, be replacing. We'll, but at this time, we'll have a motion by Deputy Supervisor Second. Charles, second by Councilor Brosnan, to accept the resignation and we wish her, you know, best of luck yes. in the future. 
All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, abstaining, carried by the zero. We'll go to item B, which is to appoint a uh, permanent Spanish speaking police radio dispatcher. Off of our public uh, <coughs> civil service list, which is the law underneath the town that we uh, abide by, civil service list 23032, we're asking you to appoint probationary permanent police radio dispatcher at Spanish speaking effective August 7th. Salary to remain the same. Motion, Deputy Supervisor Charles, second to Councilman Russell. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, abstention is carried by the zero. We'll go to seven boards and commissions, and we have a resolution to appoint members of the Community Development Programs Program Services Advisory Committee. Uh, we have a uh, suggested names uh, on the resolution Aaron Bennett, Christian Rizla, Joseph Margaret, Shannon Singer, as well as as advisors, Mona Montel, Loretta Frumal from the Finance Department, and Lee Moran from the uh, Department of Public Works. And this is the, what will we be doing? They will uh, make recommendations for the CDBG. They actually hold two tier two meetings. People come and offer what they would like to do. They then report back to the board. This is along with federal law and asks for very specific categories of individuals. These individuals meet the requirements, and we must uh, move forward as specifically prescribed by the community development block grant. Motion, Councilman Ross, and okay. second, and Deputy Supervisor Charles, all in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, seen, and carried five to zero. We'll go to item eight, general matters. The first one is a straightforward one. Uh, authorization to accept a $100 donation from the American Russian Aid Association in Trotting, which is a donation to our uh, police department. Very good with uh, appreciation. We have a motion by Deputy Supervisor Charles, second by Councilman Wilson. In favor, aye. Opposed, abstaining, carried by the zero. We'll go to item B, which is a request to send Sergeant Anton to attend post critical incident uh, training in Binghamton, New York, in the, um, uh, in, on September, the end of September. And it's in your, it's uh, in our uh, budget for this item. Second. Motion, Deputy Supervisor Charles. Hopefully, hopefully it's never needed. Seconds, hopefully not. Hopefully not. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, yeah. abstaining, carry of five to zero. And then we have item C, authorization to send three officers to go to the FBI National Academy training, uh, also in September in Saratoga. Motion. Deputy Supervisor Charles, Senator Councilman Rossman, in favor, aye. aye. Opposed, abstaining, carried by zero. Before we adjourn, I do have one item of new business I'd like to discuss in the executive session as it involves pending litigation. I'm going to ask our attorney to discuss a uh, pending legal matter that I just want the board to be informed about. Okay, and before we go into executive session, uh, I just have one more correction. I said it was 63 Carlton Road for um, Ford Bank of War. It's actually 68 Carlton Road. It's on the map. Yeah. Amend that resolution. We'll amend the resolution to the correct address. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Slater. So, this time I'll call for a motion to go to executive session to discuss a pending legal matter. Uh, I'll ask that um, the uh, town clerk, the chief of staff, and Ms. Slater stay in the room with the uh, town board. We have a motion. We did that. We just yeah, did that. Did we have a motion. Yeah. Motion, Councilman Ross, for second deputy supervisor Charles. Aye. 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 Applause. Abstaining. Carry. Uh, five to zero. I think Mr. Klasky. Good. Thank you. So thank you. We're back at it. We voted uh, to come out of executive session during which time we had discussed uh, several pending uh, lawsuits. And at this time, if there's no further new business, I'll call for a motion to adjourn. Motion by Councilman Rossman, second deputy supervisor Charles. All in favor, aye. Opposed, abstaining. We hereby stand adjourned by unanimous vote. Thank you, everybody. Have a great evening. Thank you. Oh, have a good night.